Hi, it's Kristen, and this is the Spookopolathon. Spookopolathon is a month long readathon created by Becca. I will leave her channel linked below. So I believe it started off as Bookopolathon, which was more just like a general readathon, and then she started doing themed ones. Obviously, Spookopolathon is like October autumnal Halloween themed. Um, I wanted to join in with this one having previously not joined in <laughs> with any uh, Bookopolathons because like one I sort of kind of know Becca now. I went on holiday with her last year to Croatia with a bunch of other bookish ladies. Um, I love a autumnal spooky Halloween themed readathon and also Becca said that this might be the last Spookopolathon, Bookopolathon that she does um, at least like for the foreseeable future. Um, so yeah I thought why not join in now while I have the chance. So we have the Spookopolathon board. So it's based on like the premise of sort of Monopoly if you didn't know um, and each uh, space you land on equates to a different reading prompt. So Becca says you can read like literally whatever you want you can tailor this readathon to you um, but I thought since it is a spook of a I will definitely try and just read like horror, thriller, crime, murder mystery, speculative fiction that kind of thing. I didn't have a ton of horror on my shelves so I actually went to my sister's house and I raided her shelves because <laughs> she reads a lot more horror than I do or she owns a lot more horror than I do. And then we also have the community shelf and chance cards. These have prompts on them so if you land on those space you read based on like the prompts that you make up yourself and these have specific books on them. I tried to make it a bit more of a challenge like Becca suggested by putting prompts that like will lead me to books I really want to read but also some prompts that might get in the way <laughs> of what I want to read. So for example I've put like some prompts I've put to like read a borrowed book and that would work for me reading one of the books I got off my sister um, and then one of these I've put is like read a kindle book which will still get me reading and I do need to read my Kindle books but I really want to get through my physical TBR so that will keep me reading but will sort of throw a slight spanner in the works. And then these ones I've done a mix of like books I really do want to get to this month and then ones I'm not as fussed about but like it would still get a book off my physical TBR but yeah it's a mix of ones I really want to read and ones I kind of want to read. <laughs> you will have to excuse me for at least the first part of this uh, reading vlog. I do not feel very well currently. You may be able to tell that from my kind of bleary eyed appearance um, and the sound of my voice. Uh, I started this month off feeling really rough, sore throat, really bad cold, just do not feel great. So I'm hoping that since this is a month-long readathon, you will only have to see me in this state for a little while and then throughout the month I will become healthier and healthier. <laughs> so the premise of the Spookopathon, you roll two six-sided die. So I have a lot of dice. I went <laughs> into my pretty dice collection and I picked out some that I thought felt like on theme. I have a lot of dice because when I started playing D&D uh, &D, I became a little dice goblin and just started <laughs> getting all the pretty dice. Even had a dice advent calendar one year which was great. You open the door and it was a different dice every day and you ended up with like three full sets and then a couple of extras. Um, but I went for my set, my one set that's like purple and green mixed and I thought it was really pretty and gave like Halloween vibes. I feel like purple and green can be Halloweeny colours. And then the other set I went for, um, these ones which have like a dark pink and black sort of leaking into this like 
faded like cream sort of see-through set um I think they were called like something should be like poison or something so I thought those two were great so I got my pretty dice to go with it so uh I will roll as I go there is like a version of this where you do all your rolls at the beginning of the month you sort of pick how many books roughly you think you're going to read so if you're like oh I normally read five books in a month you do like five rolls or if you read like ten books in a month you might do ten rolls um but I'm just going to roll as I go along because I really have no idea how much I'm going to read this month um I really want to have a good reading month because September was not a great reading month for me however I have such a busy month this month I feel like this always happens when readathons I'm really excited for come around I get sick <laughs> a lot of the time and I end up actually having a really busy time during the readathon I've got like meetings at work that I wouldn't normally have I've got like a big work fundraising event I'm doing extra hours and then at the end of the month I'm going on holiday <laughs> so I'm gonna fit my reading around everything so I didn't want to like create a TBR of a certain number of books and then not get to all of them so I'm just gonna roll as I go along every time I finish a book I'll roll again there is a rule that if you roll double <laughs> so if you rolled like two threes or two fives etc um you <laughs> have to pick two books for that prompt I think or like the next prompt or something um at some point you have to double up so I really hope I don't roll any double <laughs> I will now go into the clip of my first roll and tell you what I ended up picking to read. So I hope you enjoy this vlog and come and play Spookopolathon with me. Okay, time for my first roll. I've got my two pretty dice and I didn't know what little figure to use to move around the board so I've got my feminist killjoy pin <laughs> that my sister gave me. Here we go, first roll. Okay, a two and a four. So that's six. One, two, three, four, five, six. Past. Okay, so this I think is something, it's supposed to be something I've had on my TBR in the past but not got round to. So for this prompt of like reading a book that you meant to read in the past that was on a past TBR that's like a rainy day book that you've been meaning to get to I've gone for A Witch's Guide to Fake Dating a Demon. I had a few options but I thought I'd go for this because I bought it last year I think maybe like spring summer last year so it's been on my TBR for over a year. I meant to read it in the spring and I didn't, then I meant to read it in the summer and I didn't. I thought it had like a spring summer kind of cover um, and I just never got around to it. But I thought it's not scary by any means, it's not spooky, but witch, demon, it's supernatural, it's paranormal, it fits the vibe I think still. Um, and I just thought with me not feeling great, I didn't want to delve into a more intense horror or a speculative fiction or anything I really had to wrap my head around. So I thought like a rom-com should suit me. And yeah, I just wanted something maybe that would be quite quick to read because I can typically read rom-coms quite quickly um, or just like romance novels quite quickly. So I thought if I started off this readathon by finishing a book, fairly early on in the month that would like get me off to a good start and yeah this one isn't going to tax me too much so this is about Marielle who is a witch and she's not a great witch she really struggles with her magic and one day she's doing a spell and she accidentally summons a demon and he says he can't leave until she gives him her soul and she's like I'm not gonna do that um, so he's like, well, I'm just going to have to hang around then. So <laughs> they're sort of stuck in this situation. But then to explain why this guy is like hanging around and they are like in proximity to each other a lot of the time, 
they end up coming up with this lie that he's her boyfriend. Uh, she sort of just blurts it out <laughs> as an explanation to her mum one time and then he sort of plays along almost to wind her up um, with like other people that she knows and that's sort of as far into it as I am. Um, it is a bit cheesy so far, uh, but like I anticipated that going into a book with this kind of title and cover. Uh, that's what I wanted. Um, I'm liking their banter actually. I think they've got already quite a fun dynamic, uh, Marielle and Osroth. Um, and I'm really looking forward to getting into it. It's very readable. I think I'm going to be able to read it quite quickly, hopefully. Um, but yeah, I'm excited to see where this goes and just have some fun with it. So I've come out for a walk to get some fresh air. Um, it also feels nice because the part of the book that I'm at, um, Marielle and Osroth have got out for a walk uh, in the woods. So look at me amongst the trees as well. Um, I was thinking about how actually, even though like I'm doing this, I'm reading this book as a prompt for like something that should have been on a past TBR, that was on a past TBR, that I should have read previously. I'm glad I'm reading it now because it's actually set in autumn, like Marielle's talking about how the grass is starting to go brown and like the trees and the leaves are changing colour and stuff and that's like literally where we're at in this time of year. So I'm quite glad I didn't read it in the like spring, summer. So from that perspective, it's a good time to read it now. Also, I think I was right with the like, it's easy to read, it's quick to read, it's feeling lighthearted, fun, low stakes. I mean, the stakes are her soul, but <laughs> you know what I mean? It's not like too intense to read. Um, so while I'm not feeling great, it's, been a good choice uh, to read. So yeah, I'm very glad I'm reading this and I will update you when I've read more. I'm feeling good today. I'm feeling good. I'm starting to feel a bit better. We've had a week of illness now and I'm fed up a bit so I'm glad it feels like things are starting to clear. I'm also feeling good because last night I finished A Witch's Guide to Fake Dating a Demon by Sarah Hawley. I really like this one. It was fun, it was sweet, it was sexy, it was emotional in parts. I just had a really good time. I thought their like cute flirty bantery moments were fun. I thought like the more sweet emotional moments between them were good and I thought the sex scenes were good. For those interested in romance but wanting to know like how spicy a book is, uh, there are sex scenes in here, they are not fade to black, very much not so, um, but they're also not like too intense. There's a lot of like character growth, um, not just in their relationship as well, Marielle really learns to like hold her own as a person, as a witch, um, there is some quite intense like family stuff in here of like her family and the other people in the town not respecting her as a witch or respecting her magic and they're quite nasty to her so if like a really unkind family dynamics or something that you don't like to read about this actually maybe isn't for you um but she does yeah learn to sort of stand up to people which i really appreciated and osroth helps her with that but she also like says to him like I don't need you to stand up for me in all these ways like these are my battles to fight anytime he gets like too protective like I'm a man I need to stand up for you and protect you kind of thing people call him out like her boss is like dude <laughs> it's too much of you and she says like I'm not your woman and stuff which I appreciated because recently the romances I've been reading there's been a few where the man has been like very overprotective and stuff like that and it's not cooled out <laughs> in the book and I get that some people like that and that would appeal to people in romances 
um but anytime that happens and no one questions it like the <laughs> the feminist in me is like <laughs> not sure so I'm glad that actually that got called out in here um I just had fun with this it was like a really easy read I read I read it over three days but on the first day I only read like 40 or so pages so I could have read it in two days I probably if I'd done nothing but read all day could have read it in a day very readable very fun very enjoyable um I will definitely carry on with the series because I just really liked the way this was written and how yeah easy it was to get into and it was entertaining I liked the side characters and book two is about uh Caladia Caladea Caladia I don't know how you say her name um but she's the best friend of Marielle in here and she's quite like fierce feisty um so I'm interested to see her as the main character and also in book two I believe the love interest is the villain from this book so that intrigues me love a villain dynamic I think there's something about like him losing his memory which gives me very um true blood vibes the series where Eric gets like amnesia and goes to Suki for help and they end up like having a thing because he can't remember that he's like the bad guy. <laughs> um, so I'm very interested in reading uh, book two of this. Um, yeah, just had a really good time with it. I'm glad I read it. I actually ended up giving it four stars. I think it helped. I was in, I like, I read it at the right time to read it. Um, and yeah, this is set in October. So it made me feel very autumnal because it's talking about like changing of the seasons and stuff like that so I'm glad I read it now and I'm excited to see what my next book is in Spookopoly. Um, this has put me in a really good reading mood so this was a really great first book to pick so yes would recommend if you want a cute fun uh, romance it's set in modern day so you don't need to like get your mind set around anything too much but obviously the witchy fantastical element adds like a little something to it which I liked so yeah very happy with my first read on to roll two okay here we go roll two six and three so nine one two three four five six seven eight nine bonfire what does that mean <laughs> i'm gonna have to look up what that means because i can't remember and then i will tell you what that prompt <laughs> is and what book i picked for it so it turns out the bonfire prompt is to read a book that you've been thinking about unhauling or like one that you've not entirely sure that you'll like which is not what I want to be reading right now I was just saying how I was in a good reading mood and like I would got off to a good start with this readathon and now I have to read something that I don't really want to read <laughs> so I've gone for The House We Grew Up In by Lisa Jewell I picked this because it's a thriller and I thought I at least could like get through it quite quickly um but the like me not entirely sure that I'll like it kind of angle uh comes from it being like quite a generic sounding thriller um so it's about a family who I think when they were younger these children these brothers and sisters something happened and like no one talks about it and then as adults they come back to the house they grew up in and things start to come out about that day and the thing that happened and that just sounds a bit like yeah generic to me whereas the thrillers I tend to enjoy have more interesting premises or like a little 
a twist to them or something, something that's more of an intrigue point. Uh, so I'm not entirely sure how I'm going to feel about this one. At least if, if I like it, if I end up liking it, that's a nice surprise. If I don't like it, or I just think it's like, okay, then it's one I can unhaul and clear up some space on my shelves. So I'm trying to think positively either way. <laughs> Hopefully I will like it. Um, but yeah, I want to try and get through this one as quick as I can, really, so I can <clears throat> stay in the reading mood, feel productive, get something else off my TBR, and then be able to move on, hopefully, to something I actually really want to be reading. So, yes, the house we grew up in, I will let you know when I'm further through than 15 pages. I'm at work. I thought I'd do a little update though because I'm between sessions. I'm on a break. Um, so yeah, I thought I'd do a little check-in. Um, there is a main road right outside so please excuse any noise. Uh, I feel so far away. What if I do this? Is that better? <laughs> I don't know. I've just been out in the cold to like get my dinner and stuff. Um, I'm aware I'm very red nosed. Anyway, I've been reading The House You Grew Up In by Lisa Jewell. Still not getting thriller vibes. Like, am I wrong? Is this just like not actually a thriller, even though it looks like one and Lisa Jewell is typically a thriller author? Um, Cause yeah, we've had like some reveals, some secrets told, some secrets yet to come out, um, and things like that. But they're all like, you know, messy family drama and affairs and things like that. Um, not like murders <laughs> or crimes particularly. Um, so yeah, I'm still wondering exactly what is going on. Um, I do wonder if like the bits at the beginning of the chapters where Laurie, the mum character, Lorelai, um, is like emailing with a guy, a pen pal called Jim. And I wonder if that's just so we get some stuff from her perspective the rest of it we just get like the kids third person perspective and I wonder if this way this is a way for us to get her first person point of view or if like it's that but also the pen pal thing or Jim is gonna like come into play somehow I don't know it might just be a way for us to get Laurie's point of view though um I'm like I'm 271 pages in and I can't remember how many pages I said there were 422 so I'm nearing the end and I just sort of really don't know where we're going I feel like there's got to be some sort of twist or reveal because otherwise not like what's the point but <laughs> we had like the death at the beginning well, we, like, we know throughout that the mum, that Lorelai has died. And at the beginning, you know, third, we also had the death of one of the children, one of the siblings. And so that's just, like, played throughout in both the, like, timelines we have. But I feel like there's got to be some, some sort of twist, some sort of reveal of like this is what actually caused one of the deaths or like here's the reason that Reese did kill himself like that sounds really sad but yeah I don't know we have had like a couple of points of the other kids like half remembering something that happened like the what I just read Beth who's the second eldest um 
something like triggers a memory for her that she like remembers her mum being like shocked about something the night before or like the day before Reese died but she has like no context for it and so neither do we um so like I don't I want to know what's going on and it's it's gripping me in that way that thrillers grip me or in the way that like mysteries grip me where I'm intrigued I want to know what's going on I want answers however <laughs> as a book am I enjoying this eh, not particularly like it's keeping my attention it's making me want to read like I do have moments where I like empathize or sympathize with the characters but am I particularly invested in any of the characters no am I invested in the mystery yes but only to the extent of I've read so far now that I just want to know what's going on but like do I think it's a book that I'm gonna come away from going wow what a book no unless these last like hundred or so pages really get me um and who knows maybe they will maybe it'll be a great ending that makes the whole book worth it but so far I'm not love it like it's just okay it's very average to me i think this is one that i'll read i'll go oh, okay at like whatever the end is or i'll go i'm okay, going what like what was the point um and then i'll probably never really think about it again you know uh especially if i unhaul it like there are certain books i think about occasionally because i just have them on my shelves and i look at them and i go oh yeah that book and then if i unhaul a book I'll often just like forget about it and be like, did I read that book <laughs> many years ago? Um, so yeah, this is disappointing because it's Lisa Jewell and I feel like everyone hypes up Lisa Jewell as like one of the thriller writers. Um, but as my first, to my knowledge, maybe I have read Lisa Jewell before, but the first to my knowledge, uh, Lisa Jewell I've read bit bland and that feels sad to say about a book about like grief and suicide and hoarding because like I do feel sorry for the characters and it's a very sad scenario but also at the same time I'm like where are we going with this um so yeah that's my <laughs> my boring update of uh I'm still reading it Last night I finished The House We Grew Up In by Lisa Jewell. Did I like this one? No. <laughs> this one's really mean. I think what bothered me the most is that, I've talked about this before, it looks like a thriller with like even perfect families have secrets. This says tragedy strikes, the kids come back together as adults secrets are revealed and I really think it looks like a thriller it's pushed as a thriller it's not it's not a thriller um there were secrets revealed um but it was all like just felt like a domestic story about this family the secrets were around like kids and affairs and family dynamics nothing like I mean, not nothing shocking because there were some like yikes kind of moments in here but nothing yeah nothing to do with like anything thrilling it's it's not a thriller it's not a crime anything like that it is a mystery i guess in that there are yeah like i said secrets revealed there is this sort of through line of the boy the youngest child killing himself towards the beginning of the book in the past timeline and the character sort of like wondering why he did it and we do sort of get a like slight reveal around like something that happened that may have led to him 
doing that. Um, but nothing, yeah, it's not a thriller, even though I think it's marketed as one. My other problem was that considering like nothing really happens, it literally just is about their family and the family dynamics, I didn't really care about the family. Like none of the characters were likeable to me. Very messed up family. I think the most relatable character was probably Megan, who's the oldest child. Um, but even some stuff she did or some decisions she made or like people she forgave, uh, I could not relate to because I was just like, girl, what are we doing here? Um, there was like one thing in particular, I'm going to spoil it, I'm going to spoil it because I can't get over it. Um, so Megan is married, no, Megan is with this guy called Bill, he's her partner. They have kids together. Bill starts having an affair with Megan's sister, Bethan, who she and Megan have a great relationship. They're very close. They get along really well. She like helps out with the kids and stuff. She gets a crush on Bill. They start seeing each other, not just like a one time thing, like a prolonged affair. And the whole time Bethan's like, I still love my sister. I really love Megan. I hope she doesn't find out. And then when it like, all comes out eventually like we do get a time jump so we don't actually see like the immediate aftermath of um like Megan dealing with it we get the reveal <laughs> we get like an hour after that and then we time jump to a little while later and Megan has forgiven Bill she says she briefly threw him out but ended up forgiving him and then they got married and then the next time she sees Bethan She's like, ah, it was in the past, we were different people then, and forgives her. And I'm like, who? I can't, I <laughs> know. Uh, if I had a partner who cheated on me, full stop, that's it, done. If he cheated on me with my sister, <laughs> like, no. And like, I love my sister, I really love my sister. We get on really well, she's like, one of my best friends as well as being my sister but if she <laughs> had an affair with my partner she would be out of my life like i don't understand everyone's different everyone's different maybe that's just me but that's wild to me that they just go it was a long time ago because it wasn't that long ago in the grand scheme of things it wasn't um that was wild to me. I <laughs> could not get past that. It kept me reading. I'll give it that. It kept me reading, kept me intrigued, kept me wanting to know like what exactly had happened, what was going on. But like the ending just felt very like neatly wrapped up when the whole book so far had just been depressing and sad and like so much trauma. And then the end was, I guess, like, it was a hopeful ending. Um, but it just, I don't really like this book. In a way, I'm glad this was my first Lisa Jewel because I didn't love it. So any other Lisa Jewel I read will hopefully be better rather than me having, like, read and really enjoyed Lisa Jewel and then come to this one and go, mm, nah, I don't like this. Um, but I'm glad I read it. I did, like, whiz through it when I was reading it. It was very readable. Um, so I will give it that. Um, but yeah, I'm glad I read it. Glad I got it off my TBR. Um, it is probably one I will <laughs> be unhauling in the future. Um, so it's also getting off my shelves. But anyway, that's the second book down and I can move on to something that hopefully <laughs> I'll enjoy more. We've had a high and a low so far for this <laughs> spoof properly. Let's see what we come up with next. Right, here we go, roll three. Oh, three, okay. One, two, three. Blood. I believe this one is just to read a book with like a, a blood <laughs> coloured cover, so a red cover. I will go have a look and I will find something to fit blood. 
I think the last thing you saw of me was rolling the blood prompt which was to read a book with a red cover. I picked up Tender is the Flesh by Agustina Baz Tarika. This one obviously red but also gives like the impression of you know blood and flesh so I thought that felt very fitting. Um, it's one that's quite short it's just over 200 pages which was like another reason I picked it and it's one my sister lent me so I thought if I read it I could get it back to her um, and I just want to be like trying to read as many books as I can so I thought reading a short book would be uh, useful, helpful uh, in terms of that. This one is about a man who works at a meat processing plant uh, but in this sort of future a disease has like infected and sort of wiped out all the animals so people no longer eat like cows and pigs and things the meat they eat is human um and so it's sort of just exploring that and then our main character gets gifted a specimen uh which is just a human woman and so it's then him like working out what to do with her like does he kill her does he keep her um yeah and that's sort of well, the premise is what's happened so far uh, I'm on part two I've not done a check-in so far because like this is such a short book um, I thought I'll just do the one check-in once I've reached part two and then I'll do another check-in at the end when I finished it it's interesting so far the premise is very interesting it's what first like drew me to the book I've heard so many people talk about this like whether they liked it or didn't like it I think it's yeah interesting premise strikes up interesting conversations <laughs> so far i'm intrigued where it's going i still think the basic like plot is an interesting concept but i'm not loving it it's not wowing me um it's just like pretty pretty average so far it's got short chapters so i'm finding it very readable in that way I like short chapters because I always go I'll just read one more I'll just read one more and it keeps me going um so yeah hoping to finish this today um and I will do a little update tell you what I thought of the book as a whole this was fucked up it was real fucked up <laughs> uh the basic premise is pretty fucked up um but throughout I wasn't loving it I was thinking like it's okay I wasn't super like hooked into it I was thinking I was gonna give it like maybe two stars like 2.5 2.75 but I wasn't really liking it um it just yeah other than the basic premise wasn't gripping me until like the very end <laughs> and then the very end was like so fucked up <laughs> that uh it kind of it kind of clawed clawed the story back for me a bit i'd give this like a three star an interesting premise sort of had interesting conversations throughout um don't read this if you're not okay with reading like body horror stuff and the things where like people are very much dehumanized um because it was a rough read. I didn't enjoy it <laughs> but I thought it was interesting to say the least. Um, so yeah that is another book down for Spookopathon. Uh, this was quite nice because it was short and now I can move on to something else. Next roll, here we go. I hope it's a good prompt that leads me to something I want to read. Two, two. Oh, it's a double. Oh shit. So one, two, three, four. Chance card. Okay. And double means I have to pick two books for this prompt or I have to roll again. I'll look at what the double means. I'll pick the chance card. Oh my god. My Throat and Open Grave. Okay. That's a short book. That's good. So I'm reading My Throat and Open Grave. 
and then I'm rolling again, I think, and picking a book for this. I will clarify and I will tell you in the next clip what I'm reading. Okay, we've got, oh my goodness, a three and a five. So one, two, three, four, five. Grady Hendrix. Okay. Now this was a book that was like humorous or a book by Grady Hendrix. Good morning. It is Sunday the 20th. So I've been really busy this week. So I've not really had a ton of time to read or when I have had like a bit of a break. I've just sort of wanted to sit and not do a lot um, and not do anything like really taxing. So I've been watching a Heartstopper again <laughs> so I could get to series three. Um, but I have started My Throat and Open Grave because this was the chance card I pulled if I had to read this specific book. I was quite happy I picked this um, if I were to pick any of the chance cards because it's short it's only about 240 or so pages um, so I started this on Wednesday um, and I've only read about 100 pages <laughs> but today Sunday I'm still in my pajamas as you can see I have nothing going on today I don't really even need to leave the house um I did like my weekend run yesterday so I don't need to leave the house today my goal today is to finish this tidy my room and stuff and then if I have time still at the end of the day like if it's not too late um I will start another book I guess this is about a young girl who lives in this town where they believe this like folklore legend thing about the lord of the woods and how he like steals children and stuff um and Leah our main character is at home alone with her baby brother and she like leaves the window open in his room goes out of the room to like do some chores and stuff and comes back and finds that he is gone and in his place is like a bundle of sticks or something and so everyone's like the lord of the woods took him uh and her mum's like you have to go get him back so she goes into the woods to find the lord of the woods and find her baby brother and that's pretty much all the back says um or she needs to like strike a deal with the lord of the woods that's all the back says really and so far that's pretty much all that's happened so i really don't know where the story is going uh i'm i'm intrigued um but i will say i'm not hugely invested yet this cover is very pretty though i like it the title of the book intrigued me before I ever knew what it was about. It feels quite atmospheric. I think it's like a good autumnal book to be reading. It's also quite gloomy and windy outside. So I think that's quite fitting. Um, but yeah, I'm not super invested, but it is just a short book. So I'm hoping I can get through it and maybe the last sort of half of it, uh, two thirds of it will be uh be interesting be gripping uh but yeah we will see i will update you i think when i've just finished or if something like big and shocking happens i guess um but yeah that's where i'm at with this readathon in general and my reading um yeah need to go change and then finish that book I'm feeling very autumnal right now. I'm in my most <laughs> autumnal jumper. I've got my pumpkin mug full of hot tea. I've been out for a walk today when it was like chilly and all the leaves are changing colour and stuff. Very autumnal. Anyway, checking in. <laughs> I finished reading My Throat and Open Grave uh, by Tori Bovellino. I really quite liked this one. I think I'd give it like a high three star, like 3.5, 3.75 maybe. This 
I think I said before, is about a girl called Leah who uh, her baby brother is taken by the Lord of the Woods and so she is made to go after him by like her mum and the other people who live in her town. So she has to go into the woods and find her brother and complete a task uh, or like make a bargain with the Lord of the Woods in order to get him back. So that's the very basic premise. Once she is there she finds out some like odd goings on. So they've had this legend of the Lord of the Woods in their town for years and she knows that like throughout time babies have been taken and young girls have had to go and get these babies back but that they've never returned and so she's like did they you know manage to get these babies back and then they just went off did they not actually bother going to get the babies and they just left because they hated the town or did something happen to them in the woods and so she starts like learning little things it's very creepy in the woods and like mystical and maybe there are like ghosts and things and so she decides to uh, look into these deaths and learns some things all while uh, trying to come up with her uh, bargain so that she can leave and that whole premise sounded like the basic premise that it says on the back just the her going to go find her brother interested me and then when we got the like like murder mystery angle or like the mysterious death angles that was very interesting to me I love like when you have that sort of storyline of a girl or like women trying to figure out what happened to other girls and women um so that was great there was a nice female friendship in here that I kind of wish got explored more um but I enjoyed um the Lord of the Woods I kind of wish that the author had let him be more mysterious and like actually creepy for longer than did but I also get that in a short book we need to like move things along overall really liked it the atmosphere and the setting was so interesting very intense I really got swept up in it um it is very atmospheric throughout I think very my kind of vibe of like in nature out in nature like weird things happening but like you don't fully know what's going on or like what's real and what's not um and then the characters just doing like weird <laughs> shit like there's a point where uh, Leah finds like a dead body and it's just like a skeleton with some like rags of clothing on it um and she just like lies down next to the skeleton and like twines their hands together um and she's like my hands and the bones <laughs> like grip each other and I'm like that's weird girl but I kind of love it I kind of love it and I do think it could have there just could have been something more to it which is why it didn't get like four or higher stars but like a high three star really solid book that was like yeah a little bit creepy ish in like those kind of moments or just like kind of weird um and yeah intense in terms of like the subject matter it's discussing um but yeah a good read so that was my role for the chance card and I picked up that I had to read this specific book and then I rolled a double on this so then I rolled again and had to get a book that was either like humorous satire kind of thing or a book by Grady Hendrix because I landed on the Grady Hendrix prompt. I was going to read the Grady Hendrix book I had because that makes sense 
However, instead, I went for another book because I have to read this book. Uh, I'm going on holiday with friends this weekend and we all decided we would read this book and then have like a book club night. Um, but I've, I've not read this book, I've not got around to reading it. I was hoping that there would be a prompt that would mean I could read this book, um, but there hasn't been so far. And I think this prompt is the closest I'm gonna get, so I'm just gonna read. Uh, Her Majesty's Royal Coven by Juno Dawson for the Grady Hendrix prompt of read something that's like satirical or humorous. Because it does say on the back, uh, blurred by Samantha Shannon. It says her characteristic wit and grit shine through. So I thought, wit, you know, um, this does make me laugh that it's Her Majesty's Royal Coven, HMRC, <laughs> which is a thing in the UK. Um, and also that uh, HMRC, like the website is gov.uk, but in here they link it as uh, Her Majesty's Royal Coven, uh, cov.uk which amused me so I think it's fair enough to go with this one for like a humorous but slightly spooky read this is about a group of witches who were like friends when they were younger and some of them are still friends some of them have grown apart a bit 20 years later but then a prophecy uh, is brought to light, uh, discovered, and uh, they all sort of have to come back together again to deal with what is going on in the witchy world. So this sounds really interesting to me. I've read from Juno Dawson before, I've read a witchy YA from them years ago and I've also read their non-fiction um which I think was called the gender games something like that which is all about gender and her transitioning and all that stuff and that was uh interesting that was good um I didn't love the YA but this is adults I think I gave her YA three stars and then maybe gave the gender games three or four stars um but i'm hoping an adult fiction will potentially be more my vibe love a witchy read this i think has a fun twist on it in that like witches work for a sect of the government that's an interesting take on things um so yeah I'm gonna get into reading this for my Grady Hendrix humorous book prompt so I can finish it before I go on holiday. I'll finish this, I'll give you an update and then we'll do another roll and then I will be on holiday and it might be a bit choppy and changey but we will see what we can manage. days since you last saw me. Um, those last few clips you would have seen were of my holiday to the New Forest with two of my best friends. We each went there Friday to Monday, had a really lovely time. It was very busy but also like quite chill and relaxing. Felt like we were always doing something but like some of the stuff we were doing was relaxing in terms of like going in the hot tub or having like a games night um and then we also like went on long walks we visited Burley which is like a witchy village we went to Fursey Gardens which is like this garden area with 
lots of like fairy doors and things like that. It was just very cute. All the leaves were changing colour. Everything was very like orange. It was just stunning. And there were like so many animals around. It was just wonderful to be in nature. Um, so here's my update with my reading is that just before I left, like the day before I went, I speedily finished Her Majesty's Royal Coven by Juno Dawson. This I really enjoyed. We read it as like a sort of book club book. Um, so we all read it and then we talked about it and shared our thoughts when we got there. This one was very fun. Um, I picked it for the Grady Hendrix prompt of like it being humorous and it was but it's not like laugh out loud funny um, there's just like moments throughout and like just the way the characters talk um, it's quite like sarcastic and witty um, some characters are obviously funnier than others um, but generally I just really loved the vibe of this one um, yeah we have this group of friends who were like really good friends when they were younger they've grown apart a little bit as they've got older um they're not all in her majesty's royal coven anymore um but then they sort of get pulled back together because of circumstances and like a potential threat to witches uh and that's pretty much all i can tell you without like spoiling too much um there's a lot of like LGBT rep in here, which is great. Um, the author, Juno Dawson, is a trans woman. So there's some great like conversations about that. Uh, my friends and I did have this discussion of whether, like in parts, it got a bit like too, I don't want to say like preachy, but like really hammering home its point. I think my only thing with it is that I think the people who will pick up this book and read this book don't necessarily need all the explanation and the like re yeah like I said really hammering home of the points about like trans people and that because I think the people that would most need to hear those things aren't going to be reading this in the first place um although at the same time i think if you were a young girl trans person reading this it could feel quite affirming to read those things so i'm not gonna like begrudge it you know um and i'm all for more trans inclusion in books but yeah i really liked this one it was very fun there was a lot of like pop culture references and the characters are a little bit older than me and my friends they're like mid to late 30s in here and me and my friends are all 29 turning 30 next year um so some of the references were very much like sort of still of our era um or just like on the tipping point of our era they talk a lot about like the Spice Girls in here so we like got the references and all that stuff. If you want like an adult book that is about adult witches <laughs> um, then I would yeah really recommend this one and it ended on such a cliffhanger that I think we're all gonna pick up uh, the second book because my goodness so yes, that is my review of Her Majesty's Royal Coven. Um, then I did a roll for what book I was going to read next. I did it before I went on holiday so I could take that book on holiday. Okay, it's time for our next roll. This one is going to determine what book comes on holiday with me. So I'm kind of nervous. two and a three so one two three five spooky okay this could be good i will let you know what i picked in the next clip just <laughs> just during here uh and yeah we'll see what i pick out um but then i didn't actually end up reading that book uh because i was just doing other stuff i was busy with my friends <laughs> we were always doing something and even if we weren't doing something we were like chatting you know spending time together because we don't see each other very often um 
but I will be starting tomorrow on the final day of the month. I will be reading What Moves the Dead by T. Kingfisher. Um, I thought it's short, so hopefully I can read it in a day, <laughs> hopefully. And then that will be a nice like end to the month, finish a book, finish the month, and actually like this I think will have been my most successful reading month of the whole year. Um, I think it helped by the fact that a few of the books were short, like Tender as the Flesh and uh, My Throat and Open Grave, they were quite short books. And then things like um, A Witch's Guide to Fake Dating a Demon was a really quick read because it was just fun and cute. Um, so I think the kinds of books I read have really helped me get through books. But also this readathon has been like really good motivation. So I'm happy and like I've read some of my own books. I've read books I've been meaning to get to. I've been reading books I've borrowed from my sister and have been meaning to like read from her shelves for a while. So overall, this isn't like a complete wrap up because I still need to read another book. Um, but so far I've been having a great readathon and yeah, just having a good time. So I will update you. Maybe when I've just read What Moves the Dead because it's a shorter book. So potentially I'll just try and read it in one go. Um, but yeah, I will catch you up on everything in the next clip. So I read What Moves the Dead by T. Kingfisher. I started this on the last day of the month and because it was so short, I was hoping I'd finish it but I didn't, so I did go slightly into November when reading this, but please let me off. Um, this was my first Tea Kingfisher, and I would absolutely read more uh, from them as an author, because I really liked the atmosphere and setting in this one. So this is sort of like a retelling, sort of different take on uh, the is it the House of Usher, the Fall of the House of Usher? That story. So we have Alex Easton, who is a retired soldier, and Khan gets a letter from an old friend who is like, I'm really ill, um, and my brother's really worried about me. Will you mind like coming and just being here? And so Alex goes and gets to the house and realises that the friend is very unwell and so is the brother and there's definitely something going on and maybe it's to do with the sort of plant life in the area. There was like some sort of elements of like body horror in here um there's some like animal death as well so be aware of that if that's something you're sensitive to um it was just really fun creepy weird um unsettling vibes throughout and yeah i liked it i didn't love it but I re did really enjoy it for what it was um yeah I thought it was very atmospheric really liked the setting and the way the surroundings and the situation were written about felt yeah very uh gripping definitely set the scene set the tone of the uh novella really well so we definitely, definitely read more from T. Kingfisher. Uh, I believe there's a second book to this and that it's becoming like a series or at least a duology. So I would definitely read that because um, I'd be intrigued based on how this ended, um, like what a uh, sequel would bring. Um, but yeah, if you like a short, creepy unsettling weird kind of story then I would 
recommend this one. A good solid end to the readathon even if I finished it slightly outside of October, outside of actual Spookopolathon. Overall, October I thought was a really great reading month for me, definitely spurred on by doing Spookopolathon. I felt very motivated, I wanted to complete the prompts, uh, it's one of the best reading months I've had this year, I'm very happy. We started off really strong with a fun witchy demon romance, I gave this four stars, really loved the Witch is Going to Fake Dating a Demon by Sarah Hawley. Then we went to a not so great one <laughs> for me, The House We Grew Up In by Lisa Jewell, but it got a book off my TBR, which is always a good thing. And I read it fairly quickly. Then we went to Tender Is The Flesh by Augustina Banstreka. This one was, again, unsettling, atmospheric, creepy, a solid three star read for me. Then we had My Throat and Open Grave by Tori Bavolino. This was like a really solid uh, like 3.5, 3.75 for me. Really loved the atmosphere uh, and the general like creepiness and vibes of this one. Then we had a like 3.75 four star with Her Majesty's Royal Coven by Juno Dawson. This one I had great um, chats with my friends about and really enjoyed reading this um, for like a book club element with my friends and then finished off with What Moves the Dead by T. Kingfisher. So loads of all the books I read for Spookopathon. I'm really happy with that. It got things off my TBR that I've been meaning to read. It got things off my <laughs> sister's shelves that I've been meaning to read. And we obviously give those back to her now. So I'm really happy. I still feel very motivated from reading. And even if Becca doesn't do any more Bookopolathons or Spookopolathons, I'm definitely going to keep the board and like maybe just play by myself every now and then when I feel like I need motivation and prompts to read. Overall I landed on a few not brilliant prompts in terms of getting to what I really wanted to read but it did make me read some stuff that I maybe would have kept putting off. Did you take part in Spookopathon? And if you did, how did you get on? Did you happen to read any of these? Let me know in the comments below and I will see you soon with another video. Bye.